and welcome to What's That with Prisma Cloud. In every episode of What's That, we'll break down complex cloud security topics into easy to understand concepts. I'm Ashley from Prisma Cloud, and today we'll discuss the basics of container security and how containers can help you streamline your application development process. Some of the most exciting developments in cloud computing and application development are happening with containers and container security. Not sure where to begin? Let's start with the basics. So what is a container? A container is a set of processes isolated on a system. The technology has been around for decades. The real magic of containers is that we now have a simple way of describing them. First, you start with a text file that humans can actually read. This is the Docker file. The Docker file has all of the steps needed to create your application. It may need to pull in some code or install some libraries, but in the end, it controls which processes to run or ports to listen on. Then, this text file is built into a container image. This is a static file or multiple static files on a disk that holds the code and metadata needed to run processes for an application. The cool thing about a container image is that it's made up of layers corresponding to the lines in your Docker file, with each layer building on top of the other one. You can build on these images to customize them to your own needs by pulling a publicly shared image and layering your own software over it. Don't be fooled. An image is a set of read-only files. At this stage, it still isn't doing anything. It's just information on a disk. If you make a change to your Docker file, then it's a really quick process to rebuild the image as only that layer has changed. Quick recap then. You have Docker files, which describe what makes up an image. These can be shared or stored in version control. Then you have your images, which you can store in registries and share. Finally, you can build on those images. You can pull from the many publicly shared images and then layer your own software on it, creating your very own image. Now that you have an understanding of containers, here are a few ways that containers make building, deploying, and scaling cloud-native applications easier than ever. Number one, usability. You can reuse other people's images. Plenty of vendors and suppliers provide ready-built ones, and at runtime, you can add your own settings. You can also override a port, for example, or provide a different configuration file. Number two, containers are reliable. Images are read-only. If you change something, then that's a whole new image. This makes it easy to start a new container and keep its foundation intact. Something not working in a container? Kill it and start a new one. Boom! Now it's back to how it was originally written. A container also makes it easy to keep your application code independent from the rest of the computer. The container only holds the code and the libraries needed for the application. For example, someone creating an application doesn't need to worry which version of Linux they're running on, or whether their library is installed on a virtual machine, or asking the Unix team for the right ownership of files. They have everything they need in this self-contained little, well, container. Number three, containers are lightweight. You can quickly start and stop them and have multiple running on the same machine. Here's a simple example. If I have a web server, then in my configuration, I have to say the port it will listen on. If I have multiple web servers on a machine, then I have to manage those ports. Without containers, this could become an extremely tedious process. If that web server is in a container, then each one of those containers running will think they are listening on port 80 or 443. But the runtime handles all of that. This is a really friendly way of abstracting out the plumbing. All of this means that you can have containers stopping and starting with ease and speed. You can spin up new versions or request changes very quickly. You can even break down larger applications which might need really tightly controlled change schedules into lots of small applications which can be managed more independently. Like any new IT architecture, container environments come with their own cybersecurity challenges. Container images pulled from public repositories present a risk. 
they may contain vulnerabilities, and maintaining container image trust is critical. Container security is the process of implementing tools and policies to ensure that all container components are protected, including container infrastructure, applications, and more. Remember, your image is probably made up of other images that you've layered your code on. A business application holds a multitude of images, maybe one for billing, one for the virtual shopping cart, and other use cases. So they need to be continuously scanned for vulnerabilities. Take Click, for example. Click is a software company that uses Prisma Cloud to secure their container-based workloads. Prior to incorporating Prisma Cloud as their container scanning tool, the Click team had around 30 container workloads running in their container system. The first scan after deploying Prisma Cloud highlighted several critical vulnerabilities across every single one of their images. Their team joked that the radar chart was bathed in blood. Everything was bright crim crimson with highs and criticals across the entire production environment. This image scanning tool helped Click visualize the many potential risks to their container systems. Since then, the team has used Prisma Cloud daily to scan their environments. And recently, they got down to just seven unpatched critical vulnerabilities across over a hundred different running images. New risks and new vulnerabilities are discovered daily, so it's extremely important to understand the components in an image or container and understand their risk posture. There are a couple of primary areas to focus on when it comes to implementing container scanning. Number one, scanning the container registry. This is where all of your application images are stored. A single gap in coverage is a threat not only to your registry, but to your entire application. One of the first steps prior to entering your registry should include scanning every image to identify and prevent any incoming threats. Number two, scanning what's on the host where your container will run. There are a few things to keep in mind when you're going to run a container. The image for the container has to exist on the host, either because that's where the image was built or more commonly, because you've pulled that image from a registry to the host. So the images sitting on the host have to be scanned. They are sitting as potential running containers. The really important part of your host though, is that it has the runtime for all of your containers. Your containers share the host kernel. Your containers make use of those isolation controls from the host. If your host has exploitable vulnerabilities or is misconfigured, then your containers can break out and own the whole system. Scanning the running containers isn't enough. You should also scan the host itself and check the images on your host for potential risks. Let's recap what you've learned in this episode of What's That? A Docker file is a text file which describes how to build a container image. A container image is a static file that holds the code and metadata to run containers which power an application. Containers make it easy to build, deploy and scale your cloud native applications. Containers need to be continuously scanned to protect your applications and systems from vulnerabilities. Hopefully, this gives you a better understanding of this revolutionary approach to application development and security. Visit the Prisma Cloud blog for a deeper dive into the solutions and best practices of container security and scanning. And be sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications to get more cloud security and technology breakdowns in our other What's That videos. Let us know in the comments what topics you would like to learn about next. I'm Ashley, and this is What's That with Prisma Cloud. Until next time.